we're now going to talk about the painful arc test. This test is a component of two test item clusters. One is for subacromial impingement syndrome, and the other is for a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Before we go any further into this other stuff, let's just look and see how the test is done. It's very simple. You're gonna have the patient in standing like I am here, and then the patient will actively abduct their shoulder through its entire range of motion, whatever range of motion they have. I don't have either of those conditions, so I'm able to get my arm up all the way to approximately 180 degrees. But if a patient has one of these two conditions, don't expect them to be able to get the arm up that far. Now, if we look at the psychometrics here, the sensitivity is very low. It's only 0.33, so it's very bad at ruling out a condition, given this test is negative. But the specificity is moderately good. It's 0.81, meaning that if a patient has a positive painful arc test, there's an 81% chance that they have one of these two conditions right here. So what constitutes a positive painful arc test? It would be reproduction of the patient's shoulder pain. However, it's going to occur over a particular arc of motion. When we say an arc like this, we mean a range of angles. The study that investigated the painful arc test defined those angles between 60 degrees of abduction and 120 degrees of abduction. Now, clinically speaking, you may see it as low as 45 degrees. And so a lot of times when you Google this, like this picture here, you'll see that painful arc between 45 degrees and 120. When you're doing this in the clinic, does it really matter if it's exactly 60 or 50 or 45 or 40 degrees? No, there's just an arc of pain as they go through shoulder abduction, okay? So if they have that arc of pain, that would be considered a positive test. Now, this test is also useful because it can help you differentiate between a rotator cuff tear and subacromial impingement syndrome. So this is not a hard and fast rule, but it seems to be pretty widespread throughout patients. If somebody has a true rotator cuff tear, the entire active range of motion of abduction will be painful, meaning it'll still be painful from 45 degrees to 120, However, it will also be painful from zero to 45, meaning that as I go from my arm to my side right here, all the way up, that entire active range of motion is going to be painful. Now, other than being a part of these two test item clusters, there's another really important utility of the painful arc test. It can help us differentiate between a rotator cuff tear and subacromial impingement syndrome. So let's suppose somebody has a true rotator cuff tear. There my arm is by my side and now I'm abducting it all the way. If I had a rotator cuff tear, it would not just be painful between 45 degrees and 120, it would also be painful from zero to 45 degrees, meaning that pain would occur throughout the entire active range of motion of abduction. Now it might be worse in some areas than others, but the whole movement generally will be painful. If somebody has true impingement syndrome, they probably will not have pain between zero and 45. The pain will actually begin at 45 degrees and will continue on upward. So really it's that first 30, 40, 45 degrees of abduction that helps you differentiate between a rotator cuff tear and impingement syndrome. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, oftentimes when you look at images like this on the top right, around 170 degrees of abduction and beyond, you'll see AC joint pathology of some kind. Really, it's AC joint arthritis, so that age-related degeneration. So if somebody has AC joint arthritis, this test can also be useful because if you manage to go up that high, they'll usually have pain around 160 even, 170 degrees and beyond. But if somebody has an actual sprain of the AC joint, so of the core coclavicular ligament, the AC ligament, all that stuff that we've talked about in previous videos, those actual sprains, type 1, type 2, type 3, and so forth, those will probably still produce pain throughout the entire range of motion. But those are not very common, so you don't have to think about those as much. But if for whatever reason an AC joint sprain is on your radar, one quick way to differentiate that from the rotator cuff and impingement syndrome 
is normally rotator cuff and impingement syndrome will have pain in the anterolateral shoulder region. So they'll usually point to the shoulder, kind of right here, and even a little bit down the arm, about halfway down the arm to the elbow. So right in this area will be where they complain of pain. If somebody actually has an AC joint sprain, you can actually put some firm palpation right on the AC joint, even on the acromial process, which is one of the bones that articulates there, and that will cause localized pain. So the pain location will be different for an AC joint sprain. One other note here, as the patient goes into shoulder abduction, they may compensate by hiking that shoulder up to try to increase the amount they can get the arm up. That does not constitute a positive test, but it is something to note when you are performing this test.